Hi, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to the Matt Painter Show, live tonight from Wolfie's Grill as we talk Boilermaker basketball. Thank you so much for finding us and putting us into your Monday evening schedule. If you're listening to us on the radio or on the uh, the, the uh, Varsity app, thank you for that. I know some of you choose to watch on Facebook Live and uh, Twitter Live as well. Thank you for doing that as well. YouTube. Uh, also, lots to talk about with the coach tonight, and uh, we won't waste much time here. We'll take our first break and talk to the coach in a minute. A couple of things we'll be talking about uh, tonight with Coach Painter includes the last two games since we have last spoken, the Wednesday night victory against Northwestern, Purdue winning in that game 70-64 to on the road, and then the Boilermakers winning yesterday against Rutgers 84-72 to uh, 72 at Mackey Arena. So with those two victories, Purdue has improved to 13-4 and four in the league, which means Purdue right now a half-game lead atop the Big Ten standings with three games left to play, and none of the three certainly are easy at Michigan State, at Wisconsin, and at home against Indiana. So lots to talk about with Coach Painter. Uh, Coach Painter Show brought to you, as always, by Jimco. If you'd like to visit with Coach Painter, you can call us tonight at 1-888-246-2678. 1-888-246-2678. That is how you can visit with the coach. Uh, coach Painter joins me next. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. For 100. Off the mark, and here comes Jaden Ivey. Electric in the open floor. End to end. Count the bucket. He'll go to the line for one more. And the flush. Here's Gillis for three. He was strong against Northwestern. It's the bottom of Joe Launch from deep in the bank, open late at Mackey Arena. The Purdue is 15 0 this year. We're making nine or more three point shots. That's the narrative we'll follow throughout this game. And Stefanovic, a guy who could make nine himself. Yeah, the Glacier, the Space Eater. There he is on the other end. Ivy off the Rutgers miss. Gillis open again. Gillis connects again. As this has gone along. Williams, the step back. He hits again. He's hit a three. There are opportunities to make a call like that. Oh, Exploding off the bounce and gets to the rim for the hammer. Stefanovic to inbound. Looking for Up. Now the little hesitation goes baseline. And a wraparound to Edie for the two-hand flush. Stefanovic around the Edie screen. That'll drop. Stefanovic with nine. The step back. Tough two. High arc and shot won't go. Rebound controlled by Williams. Long pass ahead. Ivy in the open floor with a two-hand flush. Mulcahy off that double team got the ball to the other side of the floor the positive map good look inside by Williams D down there He's hard to miss at 7-4 Stefanovic gets it down there to the big man extra pass to a cutting Gillis It has been their house Dominant again Highlight to finish Williams behind the back Painter radio show presented by Jimco live tonight at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. I'm Rob Blackman. A quick reminder before we welcome Coach Painter to the microphone, no show next week. We'll be taking the week off because Purdue traveling next Monday night to play the Wisconsin Badgers on Tuesday. So no show next Monday night. The following Monday, which is Monday, March the 7th, will be our final show of the season. So no show next Monday. We'll come back here in two Mondays on March the 7th, and that will be the final Matt Painter radio show for this basketball season. That will be good timing for us because at that point the regular season will be finished. The Big Ten tournament seedings will have been set, so we can talk about not only the end of the regular season but look ahead to postseason play. Coach Painter is alongside, and Coach, uh, good week for your ball club, winning on the road Wednesday at Northwestern and, then of course, winning yesterday against Rutgers in that home game at Mackey Arena. I'll start with yesterday's game. Not that we are surprised by this, but, man, that home crowd last night, uh, yesterday was electric, I thought, at Mackey Arena. They really gave your team a push. Yeah, the crowd was unbelievable. And uh, you know how you get to where you get deep into the game and you need them to, to get loud and stand up for, like, a couple possessions? They're starting to stand up now at 12 minutes on every possession. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, right. We score, they come down, they – 
they, they help us. We they go down, we score, they come down, they they just keep standing up. So no, they've they've been great. And like I told them, you know, after the Maryland game, you know, we got to give them something to cheer about. If you don't give them a lot to cheer about, we're not we're not using um, the advantage that we have. It was interesting because uh, right coming right out of that four minute under four minute media timeout in the first half. It's a one-point game. Rutgers has the ball. They have a chance to take the lead, their first lead of the game, uh, and one-point Purdue advantage at that point. Next thing you know, you look up, you're five minutes into the second half. Now your team's up 20 points. That last four or so minutes of the first half and those first five minutes of the second half, you just blitzed them. Yeah, we really got on a run and, you know, being able to get some stops and then, um, you know, push the ball, get in transition. Obviously, Jaden did a really good job of, of breaking down the defense. Our big guys were good around the rim, and then we knocked down some shots. How about Jaden getting to the free throw line 18 times? Yeah, when it opens up and, and he's being aggressive and, and picking his spots and attacking where there's space, you know, he's hard to deal with. And if, if those guys are going to really try to keep him in front, a lot of times they just become hand checks and, mm -hmm. and he gets those calls or he gets to the rim and, and gets fouled. But I thought he did a great job just when, especially to start the game, just a couple plays where he just jump stops, takes them all on and, you know, finds – guys for three-pointers when he's doing that and making those kind of decisions now I think things are really going to open up or they they have to make a decision they have to you know either double team in the post or just allow those guys to have those open looks and it certainly was uh, helpful that they were making those open looks Purdue started that game yesterday against Rutgers six of nine from the three-point line let's go to the phone lines for the first time tonight and uh, we'll welcome Craig calling from Denver Craig welcome to the show you're on with coach Painter Hey, guys, thanks so much for uh, taking my call and uh, tremendous job this season all around. It's been an absolute joy to watch. But, uh, Coach, two quick questions for you. Uh, first one is uh, we, we all know everybody wants to play. Can you just give us a little peek behind the scenes of, of how everything's been going with Brandon and, and um, you know, how that situation's been managed, how he's doing? And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we're all, of course, behind him and uh, – I want to see him keep grinding it, grinding it out. And then secondarily, uh, assess Jaden's play uh, d defensively, both on and off the ball. So you almost got a, got a full full year of tape on him. Right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the, the thing with Brand, Brandon Newman's a good player, and he, but he has struggled in the role of coming off the bench, playing anywhere from like five to 20 minutes. And, you know, he just – that's been hard for him. And when you have as many guys as we do at – you know, and you and you go for an extended period of time of trying to make something work, and then it doesn't work because that's the role. And that, that's a hard thing because you just look at guys and say, like, man, well, this guy's a good player. You're like, yeah, but when you have Sasha Stefanovic and you have Jaden Ivey, the next guard that's going to come in and play behind them, now who can play in that role? You know, Klein was in that role with Dakota and Carson starting. And Klein was great in that role because Klein doesn't turn the basketball over. Klein shoots 40% from three. He gets the ball inside. He knows what's going on. Well, Ethan Morton has really been able to do that. Ethan Morton's, you know, not taking a lot of shots, but the ones that he does take, he makes. He doesn't turn the basketball over. He, he's more suited in that role. Brandon's more of a high-volume shooter. And so when you come in that role there and you, you know, you still – are playing the same way you did when you played 30 minutes, you, you better be very productive in there or it's going to go against you because you're not going to be able to get to that high volume with those type of minutes. You just aren't. And now you've got to adjust to a game when you come in off the bench. So that piece has really just made me evaluate as the seasons went on that we're probably better having a little bit shorter rotation um, because that's what's needed in that role. So, you know, I, I have no problem with him. Like, he's, there's, there's no punishment here. He's not getting punished. It's just you, you got to make tough decisions. you got to make the best decision for your team. And he continues to work hard. He's had a great attitude. It's been very hard for him. And uh, you know, that's just where we are right now. But you, you got you to gotta stay ready. You know, you get in foul trouble, somebody gets hurt, you have to be ready. Um, if you have a clear mind, you're, you're normally going to play better. You know, Jaden, um, from a defensive standpoint, he's been better on the basketball. Um, as the game progresses with him, sometimes he'll lose the details um, of, of what he's doing out there. And that's, that's really his challenge is, is to stay engaged, especially away from the basketball. When he, when he gets away from the basketball, it's like last night. Like that's, it's a hard game last night away from the basketball just because 
McKayhee and those guys are just such good passers, and they put you in such binds. You've got to constantly have your head on a swivel and seeing the ball, seeing the man, seeing people back cut, having help. We went and doubled a lot on those guys. It just – Rutgers had just had their way with a lot of people doubling. It's not that we foiled it. We actually, they actually spun out of it against us twice and got baseline um, early in the game. But th those are his challenges of, of, away from the basketball, just to keep concentrating, knowing what's going on. And then when he, he's been pretty aggressive on it, but as the game goes on, he loses it a little bit. And he's just got to keep his focus of guarding the basketball, keeping the ball in front of him, and not letting himself get screened. He got screened there three or four times there at the end of the game. He's just letting them screen him. You got to get in a stance, especially with his abilities, and get into that basketball and not let him screen you. Greg, thanks for the phone call. If you'd like to visit with Coach Painter, here's the number, 1-888-246-2678. More on the Coach Painter Show when we come back. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Message. Ivy. This is Hunter driving, dishes it for Edie, who throws down the jam. Northwestern just all out of sorts here on the offensive end. Edie with the block. Two points for the native of Evanston, to Evanston High School, transferred from Fairleigh Dickinson for a final year here as a college player. Great feed. Talk about what a good passer Williams is hitting Eric Hunter there. I agree, and I think he should look to score more, Dave. That was Chris Collins. <laughs> Uh, Roger Williams turning that one over. Ethan Morton into the game with the steal. Morton gives it to first to lays it. There's Edie. Man, has got to be careful. He's already got one. Now Thompson hit one earlier and hits another one. After a little bit of a slow start. Here's Hunter. Got bumped, no call, but still gets it to go. Now Williams. Nance into the lane. Williams trying to drive it on Edie, and he had it blocked away. Look at the speed at which Purdue runs their offense. Not much you can do there. Edie in the open court now. Runs into some traffic. Here's Gillis. Hits the three. The largest lead of the game for the Boilermaker. Here's Ivy. And he's fouled again, and that one goes to the first field goal for Jaden Ivy. Ivy on the move, stepping through. Gillis out of the corner, trying to hit another, and he does. Mason Gillis. Travion Williams gets it to Morton, who lays it in. Man, oh, they lift the weak side, so help was not there. Stefanovic hits the three. That offense. That struggled early is humming now. In the corner, Hunter hits the three. Eric Hunter. Back, everyone, to the Matt Painter Radio Show. Rob Blackman here with the head coach, Matt Painter, talking Boilermaker basketball. Jim Co. Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jim Co. Constructors says Boiler up. AP Top 25, uh, Top 25 released earlier today. Purdue fourth in this week's Top 25 poll. Let's go back to the phone lines, and uh, we welcome in Austin from Fort Wayne. Austin, welcome. You're on with the coach. Good evening, guys. <clears throat> coach Painter, when you and your staff are preparing the players for an opponent and going through the scattering report, how do you know where the line is between giving your players useful and necessary information and giving them too much information? Thank you. Well, you, you break it down in, in terms of uh, their tendencies from an individual standpoint, what they like to do well, go left, go right, go over your left shoulder, go over your right shoulder, um, the volume of threes, where they shoot from, um, are they a good passer, are they a um, bad passer, are they, you know, whatever, you know, all the pros and cons of, of what they do. And then you break it down from an offensive standpoint, what they like to run, their tendencies, what they run more of um, defensively, you know, how they guard ball screens, how they guard back screens, down screens, um, how much they like to change their defenses, what kind of different defenses, what we're going to use to attack it. So you really just give them everything, um, but you give them to them in, in, in different uh, waves. So you give them to them in a scouting report on paper. You walk through a lot of things in practice. You break down certain things that's their – kind of their staples of what they do. You make sure you, you, you get a lot of reps in there in some drill work. You do five-on-five 
um, stuff with them. There's a lot of similarities to your opponents, especially when you get in conference play. You'll have some differences, um, but they're not normally extreme. I would say that we're a different matchup in how we play and how we do things compared to other people. And that's how I like it. I want to I be different where you know, people have a tougher time to adjust um, to what you're doing. So, but um, what you decide and how you decide, this team has really been a challenge from a defensive standpoint because I don't feel schematically what we're doing is wrong. We have too many breakdowns. So simply whatever we decide to guard somebody, you know, we might do it that way and we might not do it that way. So that lies in your concentration. That lies in your communication. And that's our problem. Our problem isn't our physical ability to guard. Our problem is can we concentrate and hold our concentration to do our job and then communicate and help each other. Our communication's not been great and our concentration's not been great. But we've proven that we, in spurts, especially at the end of games, can do our job and do what we're supposed to do and then collectively be a good defensive team. Speaking of practice, when you and I visited last Monday, I think you were maybe most looking forward to having right. not only a few days off, but a few days to actually practice. How excited are you about this week to actually have an opportunity to, to practice? Right, and you know what? coaches normally look at is you're not very good or you're a little sluggish in practice after a day off mm. well if you go 23 days without a day off then you don't have to <laughs> i guess worry about that part of it but <laughs> right you get um at this point we'll take two days off this week we'll take today and we'll take tomorrow and then we'll practice wednesday practice thursday and then we'll, we play saturday at noon so friday right. will be like our shoot around so we won't have a day of the game shoot around so that that will be it and um, I'm looking forward to Wednesday and Thursday. I think we can get yeah. a lot of stuff done and, and really get prepared um, for our game on Saturday, and, and that's the way it should be. Uh, more with Coach Painter in about two minutes as we take a break. It's the Matt Painter Show. It's brought to you by Jimco, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. At Unity Health. I'm flying, I that comes with uh, playing tough and playing hard. And Edie, rushed it home. We gotta just bring it, we gotta bring it, we gotta be energetic. The majority of teams are scared of the speed and transition. The defense That's what happens when you take that risk. has to pick their poison. Our fans are our backbone, you know, they, they give us energy, um, they get us going. Um, but man, it just means a lot to have people supporting you. Um, you hit adversity and you know, sometimes people give up on you. And, um, and it's just to be back home and just see everybody still cheering, man. Uh, like I said, Mackie was unbelievable, unbelievable tonight. Um, they were unbelievable against Maryland. Uh, I think they, they won the game for us at, when we played Maryland. Uh, so, man, it, it, it means everything, you know, just to have that support. You know, we're clearly biased, but this is, uh, I think this is easily the best environment in, in uh, the country. So uh, having fans here every single night that are sell, sold out and packed the place, it's um, it's really unique to, to play in an environment like this. And bittersweet, don't, we only get one more time to do it um, next time against Indiana. So just try to cherish those moments and enjoy, um, you know, the fans while we can. <laughs> Painter Show presented by Jim Co. Live tonight at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Time now for our Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. I want to talk about our three former Boilers who were on Major League Baseball opening day rosters last year and we hope the same is uh, true for this coming season. Kevin Bl uh, Plowecki, Nick, Nick uh, Whitkren, and, uh, and Josh Lindblom. Uh, Kevin actually finished the season last year on the 40-man roster for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, Nick did the same as well. 
uh, for the uh, well, the Cleveland Gladiators, now formerly known as your Cleveland Indians. Uh, although I will tell you, Nick, uh, this past November was optioned to AAA Columbus, so let's hope Nick can get back up to the big club. And the same can be said for Josh Lindblom. He started the season with the Brewers, but uh, in May was sent to, to AAA Nashville. But uh, here's hoping those three guys are end up uh, not only on a Major League opening day roster, but here's fingers crossed that Major League Baseball actually happens sometime soon, as I know uh, all of us who appreciate baseball are not real happy with the current lockout situation with, uh, with MLB. Back to basketball. Coach Painter, Rutgers game one versus Rutgers game two. Look, going back and looking at some of the numbers from the game on December the 9th and the game yesterday, you basically did a lot of the same things. In that game in December, you out-rebounded them. You had less turnovers than Rutgers, had more possessions than did Rutgers, which is also what you did yesterday, out-rebounded them, less turnovers. The biggest difference yesterday, you shot the ball a little bit better than you did in December. Yeah, that was the difference is, is our ability. Um, I thought we did a better job on Ron Harper, too. You mm -hmm. didn't get 30 points, but <laughs> right. you got to understand, like, Geo Baker didn't play in the first game. Yeah. And they're once again, their bench played well against us. You know, Mag played well in the first game. Mag played well in this game. Re Reber, Reber, is that his name? Reber, yep. Reber, Reber he's Reber. played well. He played really well against Michigan State at home. Had, had a great game. He had a great game against us. So they're getting some contributions from from their bench and, and a lot of different guys. That's a that's a dangerous team right there. And I thought they played well yesterday. Mm. So I didn't think like it was one of those things where I thought we played better, but I, I thought they played well. I thought they did some really good things out there. And, and obviously Big Cliff – you know, he has yeah. a promising future. A couple of those dunks oh. were oh, wow. out of this world. Wow. I mean, he's a shot blocker. He's a rim protector. He's changing shots down there, um, be able to finish as a diver and a roller to the rim. And so, like, they, they have a good team. Like, his starting five, and then you're like, okay, they're, they're starting five. But then you think about their bench. Their bench has improved. Everybody on their team has gotten better. And, you know, how good of a job has Steve Peichel done? Yeah. I mean, right. he's he's been fabulous. He's been great for our league. I think when you take Rutgers coming into our league right away and then now what they have brought to our conference from a basketball standpoint, they, they've, they've been great for our league. I mean, that's, that's the first time we won in five games. Yes. Five games. Had lost four in a row. Yeah, yep. I know three of those games are at Rutgers, but – uh, it is what it is. You know, you still got to be able to beat people, and we haven't been able to beat them. And um, so that was a that was a huge win for us. But a lot of respect from from me and, and my staff and, and our players, just on on everything that they've done this year and everything they've done since Steve has been there. How about the fact your team has only seven turnovers? Because Rutgers, for the most part, they were in full quarter, three quarter court pressure for almost that entire game. Yeah, and you know, Eric Hunter did a really good job against that, and. Um, Isaiah Thompson didn't do anything wrong per se. I just stuck with him because, you know, we, we've had our issues with it and we were doing a good job with it. And I just, in that second half, I just like, hung with him and wanted to keep him on Geo Baker as much as possible. Then I switched him to McKayhee there at the end when McKayhee started yeah. getting away from him. And so, um, but no, I thought our guys did a good job across the board um, of handling their press. Uh, we do have a question that was actually text in, not called in, but I think I can interpret it well enough here. I'm, I'm certain I can. This is from Mark from West Lafayette. Wanting to know about the breakdown uh, in the uh, on ball on the ball screen defense uh, when the uh, when the big man for the opposing team is setting that screen, diving to the basket, and a couple times we saw yesterday is just left wide open at the front of the basket. Where's right. the breakdown happening there? Yeah, we're, we're in a drop coverage, if you know what that is, and so you're just trying to stay as level as you can um, with your big guy and so you're just going to back up a lot of people do it so you start off in a flat hedge and then when that guy comes off that ball screen you're stopping the ball while the on ball defender's trying to square it up but he's not going to leave that guy until he gets back and squares it up as he is dropping with the level of the diver he's just the ball's either the on ball defender's either messed it up and he's not quite there yet and he got behind him and that's what's so hard when you deal with guys you can throw lobs to mm -hmm. because a lot of times those other guys will get a little bit behind them and it doesn't matter because you can't throw them lobs, especially when Zach's in the game. With, with a guy like him, Big Cliff, you know, you, you can throw him the lob anytime. You know, he's that long yes. and he's that athletic. So you, you can't let that guy get behind you, but it, it's – both guys. It's it's not one guy's issue or not. It's it's you working in unison of staying into the ball. Late in the game, we just kept we're doing the same thing. 
we our arm ball defender just kept running into the basketball. And then sometimes when you watch film and you look at it, you're like, all right, are they communicating? This is what I talked about earlier in the game. Are they communicating to where this guy's letting him know this ball screen's left or right? And then, you know, going from there. Because when guys just keep running into the ball, a lot of times the big guy's not talking about the ball screen that's coming. So you got it like – and that's been our issue. And our, our issue isn't like – how to handle it, our issue is to be able to do it, but communicate it and then do your job. Is there any way to teach a player to be a better communicator? Or is that something they're, they're sure. vocal or, or yeah. not? You, you're, you're doing it in walkthroughs. You're doing it in live play. You're, 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 you know, it's prevention. You know, when you're talking after the fact, that's what a fan does. Mm. You know, when a player, you talk before things happen so you can get out in front of it so you don't get behind plays. 1-888-246-2678 if you'd like to visit with Coach Matt Painter. We're rehashing the victory over Rutgers yesterday. Still have yet to talk about the win Wednesday night at Northwestern. Uh, that game probably a little closer uh, than we would have liked at the end, but only because of some missed free throws late. But for the most part, playing on the road, Coach, and you know how premium road wins are, uh, to get a road, at, a road win at Northwestern, I, I mean, look, we'll take it. I thought that was impressive. Yeah, I, I thought we played well. We had a really good stretch there in the second half. And like you said there at the end, like our guys, our guys did a really good job again against the press. Mm -hmm. You know, handled the basketball, didn't turn the ball over. We just missed our free throws. We left seven points on the board in the last minute and a half of the game. Mm -hmm. Missed two front, front ends. Eric missed two. Um, he split his. He was two out of four. and missed his second one both times. I think Mace missed a front end, Isaiah missed a front end, and then Isaiah split some right there. But I thought those guys did a good job. Mace did a good job coming to the ball. Isaiah made a really good cut late in the game um, to get the ball. And once again, like I said earlier, Eric um, handled the press and, and, and really helped us. So, you know, no one's trying to miss a free throw. So it's, it's, it's one of those deals where we'll make them the next night, you know, uh, or excuse me, the next game we played, we, we made our free throws down the stretch, and that's what you have to have. But I thought our guys played hard. I thought our guys were ready to play. We, we battled a little foul trouble. I think Travion um, got into it a little bit there. But, you know, everybody, um, you know, chipped in, and, and it was a good team effort. You know, one thing I want to ask you about, I just thought of this, and I meant to ask you this post game yesterday and forgot. A couple of games now in a row, we have seen you play both Isaiah Thompson and Eric Hunter Jr. at the same time in some stretches. Right. So, both point guards on the floor at the same time. What are you trying to get accomplished there? You know, just when you're rotating with those guys, if I can get Ethan and he's going to play maybe a little four because they're smaller, that pushes him over and that opens up some minutes right there. Or I just want to keep ball handlers in there. Or when Eric goes out and Isaiah comes in, if I want a, like a, a defender, like putting Eric now on one of those other guys, that helps us too. So it's just a, it's a good mix. You know, for us, we can go a lot of different directions with, with the people that we have coming off the bench. Coach Painter joining us here. It's the Matt Painter Radio Show. You can visit with a coach. Give us a call, 1-888-246-2678. We'll be back in a moment. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Everyone will say, yes, I want to be great. Now, day after day, opportunity after opportunity, who makes that decision every time to say yes? Have a passion for the game of basketball and have a passion for the, the person fighting next to you. You know, have a passion for your teammates. Have fun. Um, not everybody gets an opportunity to play college basketball. There was a time in, you know, we, we talk about all the time, there's a time in our lives when this little girl fell in love, picked up a basketball and fell in love with, with the game. Um, you know, find that joy. You know, there's weather, COVID, you know, cancer. There's so many things that happen in our world that are ugly that we need to, to put all that aside and understand we get a chance to play college basketball. Like, how cool is that? Um, and that's, that's it, right? Like, just having a joy, like, the, to play the game for that little girl who fell in love with basketball a long, long time ago.
back, everyone, to the Matt Painter Radio Show. You can visit with Coach Painter tonight if you'd like. We're here, to, uh, here until 7 o'clock. Call us at 1-888-246-2678. Huge thank you to someone in the crowd. Kind enough to point out a mistake I made earlier. I was talking about the new name of the Cleveland Indians in Major League Baseball. Now the Cleveland Guardians. I called them the Cleveland Gladiators. That is a Freudian slip by me. Uh, years ago, I worked in the Arena Football League, and the team in Cleveland was known as the Cleveland Gladiators. So that's where I blew that one. Uh, it is indeed the Cleveland Guardians, the MLB team in uh, in Cleveland this year, not the Cleveland Gladiators. Gladiators have been long gone, as is the Arena Football League now for quite some time. Uh, 1-888-246-2678 if you want to visit with Coach Painter. Uh, Coach, I did want to talk about this. Three games left on the regular season schedule, as you well know. Your team is in the driver's seat at 13-4 and four in Big Ten play. Is this something you talk about with your team, or you just assume that they understand what's on the line in these last three ball games? No, we don't talk about it in depth. They, they understand what's on the line. Um, you know, when you're 4-3 and three in the league, like talking about, you know, winning a Big Ten championship is a little foolish. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you win six straight, and um, now it's not foolish. Like now, like you, you got to put yourself in a position to do something before you do something. And we've been able to put ourselves in this position. And so now you just kind of focus on the game, you know, that's in front of you and, uh, and keep it right there. And, and, and if you lose, you need some help. All right. But if you don't lose, you don't need any help. And so, like, it really answers answers the question. Right Pretty there. obvious, yeah. Don't lose. So <laughs> we used to say it when we were in a mid-major when we were trying to get an at-large bid. It's really hard at a mid-major. So um, I was an assistant for Bruce Weber at Southern Illinois. We went to two NCAA tournaments, and then he left and went to Illinois. Then I was the coach for one year, and then we went to another one. And then Chris Lowry came as the head coach, and then they went to three after that. So we went to six straight NCAA tournaments. And out of that six straight NCAA tournaments, obviously I'm not there the last three years, only one of them did they win the tournament. Chris Lowry won the tournament one time. So five out of those six years, you've got an at-large bid at a mid-major program, which is unheard of. Like, that's unheard of, whatever. And so, But we would get at the end of the season, and you would have, like, four games left or five games left where you, you knew that that cutoff was there. And we said, we're good, guys. Like, don't worry about it. We're prepared. We're good. We just can't lose anymore. And they would just kind of look around the room and be like, <laughs> right. like, what do you mean? Like, we're good. Just, we just can't lose. Like, you know, we're whatever we are at that point. Like, you know, we're 20 and four or 20 and five or, but we can't have any more losses, period. And so let's, let's just prepare for each game and let's, let's just get it done one at a time. And it went from like, hey, don't say that to like, like, do say that. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's find the guys in the room that understand it and embrace that and let's go out and compete. And we were able to make those kind of runs. Now, sometimes we were, not in a couple of years, we weren't in that position. We were pretty good. Um, the year that I was the head coach, we were 17 and one in league play, but we were 17 and 0. We went into our last game trying to go undefeated, and we got smacked at the end. But then we lost. We lost in the semifinals of our tournament, but we were still pretty in pretty good shape because we had won so many games. Sure. Let's go back to the phones. Matt is calling in from Carmel. Matt, welcome to the show. You're on with the coach. Hey, coach. Um, Thanks uh, for uh, all the great games recently and whatnot. Um, and as much or as little as you'd like to talk about the details of yesterday, uh, just wanted to know really about um, your thoughts on the handshake line and if you would make any changes to the end-of-game format or the overall handshake line. Yeah, I, I wouldn't make any changes. I, I, I don't think it's – I think what happened the other day is, is kind of rare, not to say that it doesn't happen at other times, but, you know, just coaching your guys up on – kind of protocol and the one thing I say to our guys before they get interviewed when we lose is you know class is what you show when things don't go your way and we got beat and whether you like it or not whatever like like the Rutgers game at their place you allow things to be close crazy things can happen but in that situation and just like it was avoidable it was just really avoidable and it didn't need to happen but you know, it did, and hopefully we can learn from it. But I don't think cause a couple incidents, you know, across the board like that. That's part of it, man. It's part of swallowing your pride, shaking someone's hand. You got a problem with something. Um, you can't have it both ways. You, you just can't. Like, I, I get paid to coach Purdue. I don't, I, don't, I don't coach Rutgers. I don't, I don't coach Wisconsin. 
If they want to do something, that's that's their deal, man. So we we've, we've been in games before here and been getting smacked at Mackey Arena, and it's hard. It's hard to take. It's not a lot. You can go look at the record. It doesn't happen a lot, but it's happened. And we've had teams come in here and keep pressing us and having us down twenty. And everybody like wanted to know like my response, of, you know, to that. I, I don't have a response to it. I don't. I don't care. Like I, we got beat, and I I can get mad that you're pressing me up twenty. I wouldn't do that, but that's. That's that's your call. That's not my call. My, I'm just in charge of Purdue. I'm not in charge of anything else. So when that goes on and you want to get mad about what somebody else is doing, I guess that's your choice. But the job's hard enough the way it is. Like everybody has advice for you to, you know, about what to do. Well, go get your own team. You know, go get go get your own team. You see how easy it is, and you go deal with everything that that's in front of you. And then you come back to me and say, oh, man, I didn't realize that. Go, well, <laughs> well, no kidding. Like, it's not as easy as it looks, you know, putting everybody together. You know, no matter what you do, like, no matter what you do as a head coach, and Katie's over here, I hope she's listening to it, somebody's going to be mad. I don't care if you're 24 and 4. I don't care if you're 4 and 24. I don't care if you're undefeated. You lose them all. You win. Somebody is always going to be mad. So it, you might as well do the right thing. And so just stick by what's right for Purdue and just leave it at that. Because some parent's going to be mad at you. Some kid's going to be mad at you. Somebody in the media is going to want you to play two bigs or zone or, like, you know, shoot free throws behind your back. They're going to want, like, it doesn't matter what you do. So anytime you win, they want you to win by more. Anytime you lose, they want you to do something different. That will never change. So just do what you think is best for Purdue. And it's not like you ignore what comes your way. But you got to be a little callous about it and, and be able to push forward or it'll, you'll, you'll get frazzled or you won't want to do it anymore. You want to go teach third grade, which there's nothing wrong with teaching third grade. You know, that, I, I bet that's fun. But I bet you that has its challenges. I would like to think that the parent teacher conferences are, are tough as a third grade teacher. I would assume. Yeah. All right. So I'm off it. <laughs> Matt, thanks for the call. We will take a break. Back to the phones on the other side of this break. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. This is Hunter driving, ditches it for Edie, who throws down the jam. The Northwestern just all out of sorts here on the offensive end. Edie with the block. Two points for the native of Evanston, to Evanston High School, transferred from Fairleigh Dickinson for a final year here as a college player. Great feed. Talk about what a good passer Williams is hitting Eric Hunter there. I agree, and I think he should look to score more, Dave. That was Chris Collins. <laughs> Uh, Roger Williams turning that one over. Ethan Morton into the game with the steal. Morton gives it to first two ways. There's Edie. Nance got to be careful. He's already got one. Now Thompson hit one earlier and hits another one. After a little bit of a slow start. Here's Hunter. Got bumped, no call, but still gets it to go. Now Williams. Nance into the lane. Williams trying to drive it on Edie, and he had it blocked away. Look at the speed at which Purdue runs our offense. Not much he can do there. Edie in the open court now. Runs into some traffic. Here's Gillis. Hits the three. The largest lead of the game for the Boilermaker. Here's Ivy. And he's fouled again, and that one goes to so the first field goal for Jaden Ivy. Ivy on the move, stepping through. Gillis out of the corner, trying to hit another, and he does. Mason Gillis. Travion Williams gets it to Morton, who lays it in. Man, oh, they lift the weak side, so help was not there. Stefanovic hits the three. That offense. That struggled early is humming now. In the corner, Hunter hits the three. Eric Hunter. Radio show brought to you by Jimco Constructors. Supporting your Boilermakers is the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jimco Constructors, Boiler Up, live tonight at Wolfie's Grill. Quick reminder, no show next Monday. Purdue on the road traveling, but we will have one final show on Monday, March the 7th. Back to the phones we go. Cameron from West Lafayette is checking in next. Cameron, welcome. You're on with the coach. Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? I, I, I just want to say, first off, the Boilermakers,
Baker Nation has been awesome this year. Uh, I, I, I want to say that. But second off, I, I wanted to know how uh, with, with Brandon Newman not, not playing, is there something there where we're trying to, to make the, you know, make that rotation tighter earlier? Or is there a reason that he's sitting on the bench? Well, I, you didn't listen earlier, obviously, because I explained it in great detail. But I'll say it again. He, he struggles in the role of coming off the bench. He's a high-volume shooter. And in those roles, when you come off the bench like that and you're playing anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, you know, you, you got to be able to adjust to that. And I compared it to when Ryan Klein came off the bench for us when he backed up Dakota and Carson. He was great because he still made 40% of his shots, but he was selective. He got the ball inside. Ryan Klein has the best assist turnover ratio in the history of Purdue basketball. So um, doesn't turn it over makes good decisions, knows what's going on defensively, just solid. And Ethan Morton has settled into that role. And when you try to play 10 people, and now it makes more sense to, to get to nine for the reasons that I mentioned, you know, if, if he could get minutes and he could get a lot of minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, you know, he would have a chance. But he could also get back into the role where he shoots. His number one thing is his ability to shoot it. But, like, but when you don't shoot as much, you know, your shot selection's got to be better. Your decision-making's got to be better. You got to keep things simple. Then you got to be a better defensive player. You know, you got to offset sometimes the weaknesses of your star players. And we got to start doing some things to help in some of the areas that we're struggling. And it's tough decisions, but that's what you get to. But, you know, we, we've discussed this with him. We've talked with him at length for, for a long time. Um, he, it really helped him that he got the opportunity that he did in his first year, but Eric Hunter missed five games to start the year. Jay Nivey missed five games to start the year. In the middle of January, February, Sasha Stefanovic, because of COVID, missed three games and then took about three games to get back to where he was before. So he had those opportunities there, and he played well. Like, he had 29 points in a game against Minnesota. Right. He played well against Ohio State at home. Like, he had some really good games, but he also was playing 30 minutes. And so now when you morph back into this role, we really tried to work with him and, and talk to him about the things that were necessary to help our team at that time. And it just was, it was really hard for him. And we were just pressing there. And so we made the move. I made the move, um, you know, to, to go to a more of a nine-man rotation um, because I thought it was best for our team. More with Coach Painter in a moment. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. And here comes Jaden Ivey, electric in the open floor, end to end, count the bucket, he'll go to the line for one more. And the flush. Here's Gillis for three, he was strong against Northwestern, it's the bottom of Joe Launch from deep in the bank, open late at Mackey Arena. Purdue produced 15 in a row this year, we're making nine or more three-point shots, that's the narrative we'll follow throughout this game. And Stefanovic, a guy who could make nine himself. Yeah, the Glacier, the Space Eater. There he is on the other end. Ivy off the Rutgers miss. Gillis open again. Gillis connects again. As this has gone along. Williams, the step back. He hits again. He's hit a three. There are opportunities to make a call like that. Uh, oh, nice. Bonovich to inbound, looking for Edie and Edie with the hammer to take us to halftime at Mackey Arena. Looked up, now the little hesitation goes baseline, and the wraparound to Edie for the two-hand flush. Stefanovich around the Edie screen, that'll drop, Stefanovich with nine. The step back, tough two, high arc and shot won't go, rebound controlled by Williams. Long pass ahead, Ivy in the open floor with a two-hand flush. Mulcahy off that double team, got the ball to the other side of the floor, the positive math, good look inside by Williams. He down there, he's hard to miss at 7-4, Stefanovic gets it down there to the big man, extra pass to a cutting Gillis. It has been their house. Dominant again, and a highlight to finish, Williams. 
It's the Matt Painter Radio Show presented by Jimco. Live tonight at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Rob Blackman here with the head coach, Matt Painter. Purdue doesn't play again until Saturday, 12 noon at the Breslin Center, Purdue at Michigan State. Only regular season meeting this year between the two teams, as you well know, Coach. It comes very late into the season, but it's Michigan State. You play them once, twice, four times in a season. You know what you're going to get, right? Right. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't really matter how many yeah, often you tough, play them. Tough, hard-nosed, very physical. Um, you know, you got to be able to secure the basketball. They run a lot of people in there, a lot of bodies. Um, rotate guys in and out, especially on that front line. Um, obviously, he's one of the best coaches ever in college basketball. And, uh, you, you know, you're going to have your hands full. You know, they, they push the ball in the break. They, they rebound the basketball. They execute at a high level. Um, got great personnel. And so it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge for us. They play tomorrow night. So we'll be able to – I think they're at Iowa tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken. And so we'll be able to watch that game. And um, – but it's different. It's different in the Breslin Center. You know, you've had some, they've had some really competitive games um, this year. Even the Illinois game, Illinois yeah. got up, and then they, man, they made like I think eight straight field goals there in the second half, and got right back in the game. Trent Frazier made a huge, huge shot to finish out that game. But um, it's it's going to be a war. It always is. You always talk about when Purdue plays Michigan State, if you don't embrace the physicality of the game, you don't have a chance. And no. that's really what it comes down to with those guys, right? Yeah. I always tell our guys it's a real easy scout, but it's hard to do. Mm. And so, like, what you need to do, this is simple. Let me lay it on the line for you. But you got to do it every single possession. You know, you, you have to have a stronger will than them. Um, you got to be tougher than them. It sure helps if you can make a, make a jumper. <laughs> we put that up on the board, make, make, make jumpers. <laughs> Purdue did win at the Breslin Center last year. You'll remember that was that uh, big shot by Travion Williams late in the game, but that was without fans. And Breslin Center, a tip of the cap to those folks because they are loud and uh, they really provide a great home court advantage for the Michigan State Spartans. And as Coach said, their game against Illinois this past weekend, Illini got up on a big and Michigan State came roaring back, made that a one-possession game very late in the contest. Our final segment of the Matt Painter Radio Show presented by Jimco when we come back. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. There's a lot that comes with uh, playing tough and playing hard. We gotta just bring it, we gotta bring it, we gotta be energetic. The majority of teams are scared of the speed and transition to the defense. That's what happens when you take that risk. It has to pick their poison. Our fans are our backbone, you know, they, they give us energy, um, they get us going. Um, but man, it just means a lot to have people supporting you. Um, you hit adversity and you know, sometimes people give up on you. And, um, and it's just to be back home and just see everybody still cheering, man. Um, like I said, Mackey was unbelievable, unbelievable tonight. Um, they were unbelievable against Maryland. Uh, I think they, they won the game for us at, when we played Maryland. Uh, so, man, it, it, it means everything, you know, just to have that support. You know, we're clearly biased, but this is, uh, I think this is easily the best environment in, in uh, the country. So uh, having fans here every single night that are sell, sold out and packed the place, it's, um, it's really unique to, to play in an environment like this. And bittersweet, I don't, we only get one more time to do it um, next time against Indiana. So just try to cherish those moments and enjoy, um, you know, the fans while we can. <laughs> Final segment, everyone, of the Matt Painter Radio Show. A couple of quick reminders. No show next Monday night. Purdue traveling on the road, playing Wisconsin on Tuesday. That's a week from Tuesday. 
It's a 9 o'clock game, by the way, fans. Yay, another late-night game for our Boilermakers on a weeknight. Uh, but there's no show next Monday. We will circle back here two weeks from today, which is March the 7th, and that will be our final Coach Painter show of the year. Again, it'll be a really good timing for us because by that time the regular season is over and we'll be able to talk about the Big Ten tournament because Purdue will know, to, uh, will know its seed uh, at that point for the Big Ten tournament. So no show next Monday. Please remember that, fans, and then just uh, rejoin us again March the 7th uh, for what will be the final show of the season. I was going to mention this as my nugget in the in closing, but it's really not a nugget because it's been all over social media since about 7 o'clock this morning, and that is my longtime broadcast partner and the voice of Purdue basketball, Larry Clisby. Today would have been his 75th birthday. Cliz would have been celebrating number 75 today uh, if the Cliz were with us, and uh, I was going to – Woke up this morning thinking, boy, that'll be a great nugget. But, again, it's been all over social media, so it's kind of old news for now. But uh, a, a happy birthday wish, uh, a heavenly happy birthday wish to Larry Clisby. So I give you this one instead. We won't speak again until the regular season is over. And who knows, maybe at that point on March the 7th, Purdue will be a Big Ten regular season champion. Think about this. Going back to when Gene Cady started here as the head coach of the Boilermakers, which is now 42 years ago, between Coach Cady and Coach Painter, Purdue has never won the regular season Big Ten title with more than four losses. Four has always been the, uh, the, the high number or low number, however you look at it. Never has won the Big Ten league with more than four losses. Now, it's worth noting that, of course, for years it was an 18-game schedule. We're now at 20 games, so you can add a couple more games there. But... If you're looking ahead to, hey, how can Purdue win this thing with three games left and leading the league at 13-4, and four, uh, again, historically, it's good to know, I suppose, that Purdue has never won the league with more than four losses. You can impress your friends with that one tomorrow. Doesn't mean Purdue cannot win the Big Ten with five losses this year. It certainly could happen, but historically, it has never happened, at least going back to the coach Gene Cady days. Uh, our next broadcast to come your way on Saturday afternoon. It's a noon tip-off. Purdue at East Lansing to face the Michigan State Spartans. Our broadcast will begin at 11 a.m. We hope you can uh, join us on Saturday. A uh, big thank you to Corey Palm, who worked uh, behind the scenes for us today. Thanks to Wes Scott, our on-site engineer. And thanks to Ray Klabmeyer, who engineered in studio for us. That'll do it for tonight's version of the Matt Painter Radio Show. We'll visit again in two weeks.